sixth Oracle Open World Rise Stu. Joined in this segment by Stu Miniman from Wikibon and also JP Van Steerdigan. Did I get it right? You got it right. All right, thanks. Senior Director, Systems Engineer, Worldwide Data Center Virtualization at Cisco. It's a big title. Yes, indeed. So it's, uh, we, it's, it's a big title and a great job. And a great thanks, job. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we had you on last year. Right. So years passed, cloud keeps growing. What, uh, what are some of the things you've seen since we last had you on a year ago? Yeah, that's a really great question. I think uh, what we've seen since uh, last year, what's been happening is that uh, our customers are uh, starting to become really concerned about digital disruption. Right, they're concerned about you know the six people in a garage that are trying to disrupt their business, and uh, in order to that, they're looking at technology to help either enable their strategy, or differentiate their strategy, or really define their strategy. Um, you know the examples out there, right? Airbnb, uh, Uber technology. They're using the technology, mobility, and the cloud to really disrupt an existing you know, brick and mortar business. Right. Let's say the taxi business or the hotel business and stuff like that. And that's happening across the board. And uh, what that is doing really from an application perspective is kind of creating an application environment which is called by Gartner, Mode 2 IT, right? Which is really focused on uh, agility, being able to develop new applications really quickly, deploy it really, really quickly into the operational environment without zero downtime, right? Which you know drives a totally different uh, IT infrastructure requirement. What we're seeing is that a lot of our established customers, those customers that are, that are deploying Oracle uh, databases, SAP applications, Microsoft collaboration applications and stuff like that, they got to now run two environments at the same time. A mode one environment, which is really focused on limiting risk, avoiding risk, right? And, um, and therefore, they're looking at highly available infrastructure. And then an environment that enables mode two, which is a totally different uh, infrastructure environment. So that's what they're kind of looking at, and we are trying to help them with that uh, with that transition, which is going to take happen over many, many years. Right. Well, we always talk about is it a carrot or is it a stick that's driving the change? And you're talking about really, it's it's the stick. It's it is the you know being afraid of this five person group in a garage that suddenly brings in a hundred million dollars of funding as a billion dollar valuation, and Absolutely. you know Uber's way overused as an example, but. It's Who would have ever thought digital transformation could impact the taxi industry right. of all things? Absolutely, and it's all enabled by technology. I would say actually it's defined by, it, the, the technology defines the strategy, really. Right because they're looking at technology and then they're trying to figure out how can we disrupt an existing business? You know, using, you know, uh, software developers that just, uh, you know, graduated college, developing these neat business applications, probably develop it in the cloud, right? And then uh, enable or take advantage of mobile technologies such as Android technology, iOS technology, and so on. So, yeah. really exciting. JP, you bring up some really good points there. Uh, we said IT so often, they, they bought on risk. It was before, I wanted to buy something because it's safe, because if I right. save somebody a little bit of money, that's great, right. but if something goes wrong, I'm probably out of a job. But what I hear you saying is, if I don't make a change, and if I don't change what I'm doing, I'm gonna be out of, we're going to be out of business, so we'll all be out of a job. Absolutely. So in some ways, it's a little bit of a bit flip, but I mean, that, that's, that's serious. People are, you know, especially you're talking, I mean, enterprise IT is defined by how slow it makes changes, you know, I, I, I can't just, you know, flip, flip, flip on a, uh, you know, on a dime here. So how, how did your team help customers with that? How, how are you, your team, changing the skill set you're doing uh, to, to help customers along uh, with some of these digital transformations? That is a really good question because, as I said at the beginning, uh, you know, I got a team of people focused on the mode one applications, SAP, Oracle, uh, and Microsoft and others, right? But now I'm starting to retrain, develop my team on Mo2 technologies, DevOps, uh, things like uh, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, you know, technologies that are used to uh, program the infrastructures, very relevant. Starting to focus a lot more on OpenStack and what that enables from a DevOps perspective. So really retraining the uh, my team, but also the the larger organization, so that we can talk to customers intelligently, and we're able to position our solutions intelligently for our customers too. It's interesting the way you split mode one and mode 
two applications, really ERP and, and, and Oracle and SAP as a mode right. one as you defined it and some of the newer gen right. stuff as mode two. What's interesting is a lot of those mode one applications were developed back in the day really to support the business, not be right. the business. Right. Now we're seeing more and more really that IT and the way you execute your IT uh, effectively becomes the business that just happens to be wrapped around a particular service or a particular product or a particular right. way you've done yeah. business. So do you see kind of the mode two, the importance of what you've defined as mode two yeah. really escalating and really starting to catch or even surpass in some ways execution of business strategy versus keeping the lights on and keeping everything moving. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, from a mode one perspective, you know, a, uh, an established enterprise, that's how they invoice their customers, that's how they pay their suppliers, that's how they do their HR, you know, that's how they do a lot of different things, basically to run the business. But the mode two, it's like, hey, now I got to do something, you know, to innovate to disrupt my competitors or to stay on par with some of the disruptors out there, the startups that uh, you know are out there. So uh, totally different uh, dynamic, right? Uh, and you know, there's a lot of I, a lot of uh, you know startup companies that uh, are kind of building their business around this whole mode two concept. You know that th they run their business. Not only are they going after new opportunities using this Mo2 technology, but they're also running their business using Mo2 types of uh, technologies, right? Like uh, whether it's, uh, you know, service now, where, where, you know, there's a lot of software as a service types of, uh, you know, companies out there that offer financial packages, ERP packages, uh, HR packages and stuff like that, so. Right. so JP, here this week, we, we've heard a lot from Oracle about cloud, and security's been a top of mind issue. Uh, you, your team, as you're talking to customers, what, what, what are the big out, uh, issues that they're grappling with uh, when it comes to Oracle environments? What, what's, what's the top of mind issues, and what, what are they looking to both, both Cisco and, and the ecosystem for help with? When it comes to an Oracle? So, uh, cloud, security, what are the top of mind Oracle-related issues that yeah. your customers are striving right. with, that your team helps okay. with? So, I would say that for most of the customers that are running an Oracle type of a business, right, a production environment based on Oracle, they're not going to do anything dramatic with it from a public cloud perspective. It's probably going to stay there in the private cloud on premises, right? They're not going to mess around with their uh, business critical data. What we're seeing though is that in many of these uh, mode one environments, there's always a, uh, a production environment but also a QA environment, a training environment, you know, development environment. People are maybe looking at those, you know, non-production environments to run them in the public cloud. That's, that's a possibility, right? As long as the data can reside on, on premises, then I think many customers will consider that like a safe cloud type of a strategy. Um, you know, Moving to the cloud is something, in my mind, is a multi-year journey. It's going to take. It's going to take. It's going to take a lot more time. It's going to take a lot more time than many people thought. You know, many years ago. Uh, I think you know the the, the uh, private cloud will always continue to be uh, a, a substantial part of the market, and the public cloud will grow over time, but uh, not as fast as people originally thought. All right, security is that that, that seems to have bubbled up. It's, I mean, security has always been important, but even more so uh, these days. Security is huge. Um, you know, not only in the cloud environment, but uh, you know, if you think about it, the the whole emergence of uh, bring your own device, the whole emergence of the cloud. You know, it really requires that you have an end-to-end -end security architecture, and and you know, having point product solutions that address security issues whether it's firewalls, intrusion detection systems, malware protection systems and stuff like that. You know, these things um, don't work. You know, you can't have a security architecture based on 25 different products, point products. You got to have an end-to-end -end architecture. And that is what we are trying to uh, establish in the marketplace at Cisco. All right. So, JP, if you had a chance to, you know, attend any of the sessions or walk the show floor here, just curious, what, what, what's your what's your impressions of Oracle uh, Open World 2015 so far? Uh, anything different from previous years? I think there's a lot of focus on cloud this year. It seems to me, and I know there's a cloud session that starts off at 1:30. Uh, I definitely plan to go to that one. 
the other piece of it is really is it's the way that people interact now with companies has changed significantly. And we, we've interviewed, we had the bank on, and you know, the a bank interfaces with most of their customers electronically now. Right. It's all moved to these new interfaces, whether it's on their phone, via an application, et cetera. How are you seeing that kind of roll into the data center and the impacts of the data center where now these, what, what formerly would be kind of secondary interaction methods are now moving to the forefront, if not the primary way that people interact with other companies. What's the impact you see there in the data center? Yeah, you know, what it means from a data center perspective, right, the more people that interact with an application to do business with your company, drives a lot more requirements for servers inside of the data center. So your data centers become more and more important, which means also that, you know, I'm, I'm a uh, online banking user. I want that application to be up and running 24 by seven. You know, 366 days a week, uh, a year, right? Right, right. So uh, it can't go down either. Right. Right, and, and you look at that, right? And, and, and there you see established companies really you know, running mode one and mode two in parallel. Mode two being the customer facing web-based applications, can never be down, always gotta be up, right? Uh, being used to really kind of differentiate how you do business with customers, right? And then your mode one, which again is running your business in the background. So, JP, you know, when I think about technology, most of my career, it feels like the vendors are pushing new stuff, and the customers are like, that's great, but I'm not ready for it, I'm not sure. We talked at the beginning uh, of the interview how th th things seem to be picking up. I'm, I'm curious, you know, how are your customers coping with change? How's your team coping with change? Uh, and, you know, do you find more that customers are now coming to you and your team, you know, asking about new things? They're talking about DevOps, you know, they're thinking about, you know, not just cloud, but, you know, there's containers, there's IoT, there's all these new things out there. How much of it now is, is, is the customer uh, to trying to get that, uh, you know, competitive advantage by adopting new technology? It's happening more and more because right now, this week, the OpenStack Summit is going on in Tokyo, right? right? And I can tell you a lot of our customers are there kind of exploring what uh, OpenStack enables for them, you know? And you have other conferences like, you know, like Velocity and stuff like that that are really focused on DevOps. So our customers are learning all the time. And as they learn, you know, we hope that they also continue to come to us for the answers. But, you know, as our customers are learning, they, always pu oh, they also push ourselves, Cisco, to make sure we stay up to speed with these new emerging technologies because we know that Although the adoption may not be as fast as uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the market pundits may, may believe it is, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna happen. Right. And we gotta be part of that. The, the other big trend that we're seeing more and more is, is really the idea of sustainability. Uh -huh. And as more and more of the uh, compute has shifted to data centers and they keep growing and they're taking more and more of the load, uh, there's obviously concerns about power consumption, both for the CPUs as well as the air conditioning and et cetera. How does sustainability and really kind of thinking in terms of those parameters impacting what you guys are doing and what you're delivering to the marketplace? Well, you know, traditionally, I would say like, you know, six years ago when we introduced uh, our compute platform to the marketplace, that was one of our key advantages, right? The operational efficiencies, you know, power reduction, cabling reduction, you know, increased cooling, you know, the reduction in the amount of servers and stuff like that. That was really the way we got into the marketplace we, because we came out with a solution that was the most efficient out there. But, you know, that hasn't gone away. You know, people are still focused on, you know, uh, optimizing their TCO, right? Whether it's going with established applications or with, you know, emerging applications. It's always going to continue to be important. Um, you will see though that you know, with uh, things like open source, people are going to find very attractive the fact that from a CapEx perspective, the cost is very low. They'll find out very quickly though that the OpEx is going to be uh, much larger than in the more established mode one environment. So it's like, you know, you know is there really going to be a, an advantage from a TCO perspective when you compare the two after like you know, 10, 20 years, right? Right. So, but I think, you know, Power and cooling and real estate are always going to be issues. So I'll give you the last word before we uh, before right. we let you go. So when we uh, when we see you next year, 
What do you what are you have been working on? What's going to be what you know gets you excited about uh, kind of the next twelve months? What you guys are working on? Yeah. So what makes me really excited excited over the next uh, year or so is you know I believe that this whole transition to Mo2 is only starting right now, and I think next year we'll be really in the thick of it, in my opinion. So. All right. Well, yeah. we look forward to the update. So thanks for stopping by again, me JP. Too. Thank I, you. Thanks absolutely. for having me. Uh, great, right. JP Van Stertigen from Cisco, sitting with us here at the Cube at Oracle Open World 2015. I'm Jeff Frick with Stu Miniman. We'll see you with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.